William again by Richmel Crompton Richmel Crompton was born in Lancashire in 1890 the first story about William Brown appeared in Home magazine in 1990 and the first collection of William stories was published in book form 3 years later so first we are going to hear a foreword by Louis Renison. Louis Renison was also another famous children's author. So this is the foreword about William Brown. So you will get to know who is William Brown and you will love him like anything. So in the words of Miss Louis, oh, I love William. I just love him. Of course, it is a love tinged with enormous relief that I don't actually know him, and that he hasn't therefore been able to rifle through my drawers, making my best underwear into hats and costumes for his mad place, which incidentally always star him a lot, and of course. As I don't know him, my slippers are not full of tadpoles. But apart from that, it is unqualified love I have for him. And I don't mean because I read about him when I was a child. Because I only read about him about three years ago. And I'm a grown-up, sort of-ish. And oh, I have laughed. You know that laughing that you can't stop and it goes on and on? And you really should shut up because everyone thought... You were quite sweet laughing at first, but then you didn't stop and there is snot coming out of your nose and they want to kill you, that kind of laughing. I know I am a girl and therefore he would have not had much use for me and that is an understatement and a half. When Violet Elizabeth bought lists at him, William, don't you like girls? William just says no and is almost sick when she suggests that he kisses her. But apart from the girl disadvantage, I so agree with him in many areas. On being 11, for instance, which he is for about a hundred years, it seems. His philosophy as an 11-year-old is this. Why can't grown-ups just give me stuff, let me do what I like and then go away a lot? I don't think people give William the praise he deserves as a deep philosophical thinker. His ideas on parents, for example. Why is it all so random and unthought out? Why are we not given more of a say in who we get as parents? Is it so very much to ask? William, for instance, would like his father to be a clown. There's a bit in the circus when William is desperate to go to the circus, mostly to see the clowns. But when he asks his father if he can just pop off to the circus by himself at night time, his father says, Don't speak with your mouth full. And William thinks a clown would not have said this. And he is right, I think. My parents were not clowns either, so I don't really know. But I suspect a clown father would have had better things on his mind than table manners, big shoes, say, or falling over ladders. William's life is full of this sort of tragedy. Not only is William's father not a clown, William's father is not even someone who wants to be in the same room as William, ever. Whenever Hero decides to write one of his notorious, year, I mean great plays, and goes off to write it, his father, unnerved by the quietness of the house, says, Where is he? When he is tall, he is in the summer house writing his play. All his father can say in the way of encouragement is, I hope it's a nice long one. In fact, the whole family and usually everyone else's family is against him. Just because, well, just because he is William. Richmond Crompton, the author of Just William, to my huge surprise and delight, turns out to have been a girl. Oh yes, and a comedy genius girl, double oh yes. And she was writing when girls were mostly fainting or covered in net, 
that by the way is my thumbnail sketch of the 1920s so here it is tales of clowns pals dogs selling twins as slaves and general mayhem get ready to laugh until you think your boots will never dry and also on a more practical level learn new ways to annoy people and don't forget these books are really all about standing up for what is right never bowing to things which just are not acceptable these books show you have to display just williamness in the face of intolerable circumstances all right so william may be forced to brush his hair and go to school for no reason day after day or do stuff that grown ups make him do when he could be making an insect so but he never gets in for instance when he is forced to visit a great aunt who may well be popping her clogs william and his fat cousin with ringlets are introduced to each other for the first time and left alone to sit quietly by the bedside imagine the horror of the situation but does william crumble and sit quietly no after the grown ups have gone william starts by politely and quietly saying across the bed to his cousin hello fatty it escalates rapidly in whispers until the ringletted cousin says he will throw william through the window by his ears and william says he is too fat to do this then they fight and what is more the great aunt who may be popping her clogs perks up and starts joining in by egging them on she says is the most fun she has had for ages and this book will also be the most fun you have had for ages go forth proud williams and William S S. So, chapter one, I will continue in the next video. So, stay tuned.